Hello dear gamers, Yorkville here and today we are back for more Doki Doki Literature Club finally. So I apologize if I didn't upload my uh, playthroughs on Doki Doki. I was busy with other things in my life and also I wanted to make other different uh, videos than Doki Doki gameplays. But yeah, I'm finally back from last time where I was really sad because Sayori died, she got hung, but thank god I recovered from that breakdown and now I'm totally hyped to continue Doki Doki. So make sure to smash the like button otherwise your wife or your girlfriend is gonna get hung just like Sayori. Ah, okay, now I remember, we had to write another poem, but this time we only have Natsuki and Yuri as the uh, stickers on the book. We don't have Sayori anymore since she's gone, but okay, let's write this quick. So, pink, uh, amazing, cute, play, twill, sparkle, uh, rose. I didn't know Rose was for Yuri, <laughs> because most of the words I chose for now are for Natsuki mostly. Precious. Mm, giggle. Flower. Beauty. Uh, games. Doki Doki. Um, no, not marriage, because I don't want to marry. Uh, happiness. Memories. Smile. Uh, playground. Um, excitement. Daydream. And last but not least, Heartbeat. Okay guys, if you remember last time I was skipping most of the dialogues because, you know, it was almost the same um, story as in the beginning of the game. But it's just starting over without Sayori. But this time I'm not going to skip the dialogues for you so you can read them. So I'm sorry if I skipped them last time. It w I was just not feeling at my best. But now I am. So okay, let's continue. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Welcome back, Yorkfield. Ah, hi, Yudi. I'm not sure if it's me or if it's Yudi's expression, but the weight of yesterday's pearl still hangs in the air a little. Uh, um... Yudi glances over her shoulder, looking around the room. Natsuki is reading manga at a desk. And surprisingly, Monica isn't here yet. Suddenly, Yudi takes my arm and pulls me to the corner of the room. About yesterday, I... I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened before. And something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't acting mentally sound. Please don't think we're usually like this. Not just me, but Natsuki as well. Yuri, I'm happy that you were considerate and apologized. You don't have to worry too much. Even though I've only been here a couple days, I could tell something was off yesterday. Maybe we were just a little extra sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems. But whatever it was, it didn't make me think any less of you. I had already decided that there's no way you can be a bad person. And now that you're apologizing, I know you really didn't mean it. Ah, Yorkfield, don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person. And I'm really glad that you joined this club. Everything's a little bit brighter with you, with you around and... Ah, sorry, what am I seeing right now? I just... Hey, have you guys seen Monica? Ah, no, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Man. Yuri, I'm guessing you haven't either. Yuri is clearly taken aback by how calmly Natsuki is addressing her. No, I haven't. Jeez, this isn't like her at all. I know it's stupid, but I can't help but worry a little bit. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Um, Natsuki about yesterday. I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean any of the things I said. And I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. So... Yudi, what the heck are you talking about? Did you do something yesterday? Eh? Jeez. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. 
I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, aren't you? But I'll accept your apology anyway if it helps you feel better about it. Besides, it's kind of nice to hear since I was always afraid you secretly hated me or something like that. <laughs> no, not at all. I don't hate you. <sighs> well, you're kind of weird, but I don't but I don't hate you either. Natsuki turns to me. You're still on trial though. Hey! Suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah. Well, Natsuki was. I was not! <laughs> what took you so long anyway? Ah. Well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense though. You would, you would have heard the bell ring at least. I mustn't have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, don't give me more credit than I deserve. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm still not really good at it yet. Still, that must require a lot of dedication. So I'm still impressed. Ah, well, thanks, Yudi. You should play something for us sometime. Ah, that's... Monica looks at me. Well, I am working on writing a song, but it's not quite done yet. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. That sounds cool. I'll look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Yorkfield. Monica smiles sweetly. Ah, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ah, don't worry. I was hoping that I could share it with you anyway. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I see. I'm not sure if Monica was referring to the whole club or just me. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So, I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I chose not to bring up anything that the three of us talked about. Besides, Natsuki has already run off into the closet. Yorkfield. Um, since your compliment put me in a good mood, I was wondering if you would like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. Ah, I suppose so. I don't think I could say no to you after you gave that book to me. Well, I guess I need to make sure Natsuki isn't waiting for me. After we finished reading yesterday, she... She's fine. She's reading over there, see? Don't think about her so much. She is used to being ignored. Come on, we're going over there. Oh my god. Oh, the screen suddenly went black <laughs> for a second. What's the story about anyway? Well, hmm. I look at the cover of the book. The book is called Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking ice symbol on the front cover. Basically, it's about this religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison. And the people trapped there have this threat that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. But the facility gets even worse and they start selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and affixing them to... Oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. But anyway, I I'm really into it. The book, I mean. Not the thing about the limbs. That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. Ah, are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Yorkfield? No, it's not that. I mean, I can definitely enjoy these kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that... It's just that this kind of story... It's the kind that challenges you to look at life from a strange new pers perspective. When horrible things happen not just because someone wants to be evil, but because the world is full of horrible people and we're all worthless anyway. Oh my god, then suddenly... I'm... I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost interest or anything. Well... I guess it's alright then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, my whole body get... So okay, I didn't have the time to read. I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. 
so I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I really don't think you need to worry. That just means you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It's a literature club after all. Ah! That's... Well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get starting reading it, right? <gasps> what the fuck happened to you? <laughs> oh my god, that scared me, guys. I wasn't expecting that. Yes? I mean, you don't have to, but... Uh, what are you saying? Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had to put into my bag. Alright, it's fine if I sit there, right? I slip into the seat next to Yudi's. Ah, yeah, are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in company with someone. I see. Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or anything. Alright. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yudi means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing, maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comfor comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. Sorry! I was just bathing in the- What the fuck? What the hell? Yuri, you really apologize a lot, don't you? I do. I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... Uh, here, this should work, right? I slide my desk until it's up against Yudi's. Then, hold my book more between the two of them. Ah, I suppose so. Yudi timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Ah, I guess it, that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah, I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way, I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after it flips to her side. But in holding it like this, we are huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yudi's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh? To turn the page. Ah, sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second. I glance over at Yudi's face again and our eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, that's okay. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. It's probably the least I can do. Since you've been so patient with me? Yeah. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm really ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently letting go up the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Ah! No, I don't relate to this character at all. Definitely not. Really? I was just thinking the way she second guesses things she says and all that. Ah. That's what you were talking about. Sorry, I thought you meant something else about her. Something else? Never mind. We didn't even get that far yet, so I don't know why that came into my head. Uh, Yuri, are you feeling alright? Uh, Yuri's been a little fidgety ever since, since we started reading. You can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Your breathing is a little... My breathing? Yuri puts her hands on her chest, as if to feel her heartbeat. I didn't even notice. Anyway, I'm fine. I just need some water. Alright, don't push yourself. Yuri stands up and practically rushes out of the classroom. What on earth was that about? Yorkfield? 
did something happen just now? Eh? I have no idea. Yudi was acting a little strange, I guess. So you don't know anything? Sorry, I can't say I do. Are you worried about her? Oh, no, not really. I was just making sure that you didn't do anything to her. No, no, nothing. Ah, uh, don't worry, I believe you, silly. Yudi just does this sometimes, so it's nothing alarming. Alright, if you say so. Anyway, why don't we start with sharing our poems with each other? Huh? Shouldn't we wait for Yudi? Well, she might be a while, so I just figured we'd get started without her. Is that okay? Yeah, I was just asking. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book and slip it back into my bag. Who should I show my poem? Okay, I'm gonna show it to Monica first. Hi again, Yorkfield. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Ah, <laughs> wouldn't count on that. You never know. Wanna share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. Alright. Great job, Yorkfield. I was going, oh, in my head while writing it. It's really metaphorical. I'm not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easier for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. Ah, oh, that's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism. Sometimes I feel like Yudi's mind is just totally detached from reality. I don't mean that it's a bad thing though, but sometimes I get the impression that she's to just totally given up on people. She spends so much time in her own head that it's probably a much more interesting place for her. But that's why she gets so happy when you treat her with a lot of kindness. I don't think she is used to being indulged like that. She must be really starved for social interaction, so don't blame her for coming on a little strongly. Like earlier, I think if she gets too stimul stimulated, she ends up withdrawing and looking for alone time. Suddenly, the door opens. Yudi! I'm back. Did I miss anything? Not really. Well, we all started sharing our poems with each other. Ah! Already? I'm sorry for being late. No need to apologize. We still have plenty of time, so I'm more glad that you took all the time you needed. Alright. Thanks, Monica. I suppose I should go get my poem now. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I remember that poem, but I don't remember all of this. Let's read it again. Save me the colors they want. Bright, beautiful, Flash, mm, ex, mm, p, mm, piercing, red, green, blue, and less cacophony of meaningless, meaningless noise. The noise it won't stop. Violin, writing, the king, screeching, piercing, sing, cuisine, tangent, like playing on a board on a table, like playing a knife on a breeding rig cage. What the fuck? Endless PM of mm mm. Delete her! <gasps> Delete! No, 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 Oh, the screen glitched for for a second. Sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. I'm just trying to, um, well, never mind. There's no point in explaining. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll, facing, you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When it happens, don't forget to save your game. I remember that. I'm going to save it again. I'm going to overwrite the save. Okay. You never know when... Um, who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Anything. P what? Please help me. What the... That's my advice for today. <laughs> Thanks for listening. Okay, that was weird. Okay. Natsuki, here we go. Hmm. Well, it's not terrible, but it's pretty disappointing after your last one. Then again, if this one was as good as your last one, I would be completely pissed. 
Well, I guess I wanted to try something a little different this time. Fair enough, you're still new to this, so I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. I mean, everyone in the club writes really differently from each other. Maybe you'll find a little influence from all of us. For instance, I noticed that you were spending some time with Yudi today. Not that I care who you spend your time with. After all, I was taught never to expect anything from anybody. So it's not like I was waiting for you or anything. Still, you should at least look over my poem. You'll probably be able to learn something from it. What the fuck is this? What the- <laughs> This that This poem has been encrypted by ransomware! <laughs> Only computer and security enthusiasts will understand this, what encrypted is. It was Amy like spiders, I remember, but it's all encrypted in god knows what language. <laughs> Yorkfield, why didn't you come raid with me today? I was waiting for you. I was waiting for a long time. It was the only thing I had to look forward to today. Why did you ruin it? Do you, do you like Yudi more? I think you're better off not associating with her. Are you listening to me? Yudi is a sick freak. That should be obvious by now, so just play with me instead, okay? You don't hate me, Yorkville, do you? Oh my god, what the fuck is happening to your face? Do you hate me? Do you want to make me go home crying? Oh my god, her eyes are bleeding! SHIT! The club is the only place I feel safe. Don't ruin that for me. Don't ruin it. Please, just stop talking to Yuri. Play with me instead. It's all I have. Play with me. Play with me! Ah! What the fuck?! What the fuck?! Ah! Natsuki, what happened to you?! And there was a text saying end backwards. Or reverse, should I say. I've been waiting for this. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri smiles and takes a deep breath. I like just holding it. Ah, uh, I mean, the poem turned out good. It's, um, well, there are some things that you could work on, but that doesn't really matter. It feels like anything written by you is a treasure. Ah, uh, that came out a little awkward. Let's move on. Here's the poem I wrote. You don't have to like it or anything. Oh my gosh, okay. Wheel, a rotating wheel, turning an axle, grinding, bolt head, linear gearbox, falling sky, seven holy stakes, a docked ship, a par portal to another world, a thin rope tied to a thick rope, a torn harness, parabolic gearbox, expanding universe, time controlled by slipping cogwheels, existence of God. Swimming with open water in all directions. Drowning. A player written in blood. A prayer. Sorry. A prayer written in time. Devouring snakes with human eyes. A thread connecting all living human eyes. A kaleidoscope of holy stakes. Exponential gearbox. A sky of exploding stars. God disproving the existence of God. A wheel rotating in six dimensions, 40 gears of and a ticking clock, a clock that ticks one second far every rotation on the, of the planet, a clock that ticks 40 times every time it ticks every second time, a bolt head of holy stakes tied to the existence of a docked ship to another world, a kaleidoscope of blood written in clocks, a time devouring prayer connecting to a sky of 40 gears and open human eyes in all directions. Breathing gearbox, breathing bot head, breathing ship, breathing portal, breathing snakes, breathing god, breathing blood, breathing holy stakes, breathing human eyes, breathing time, breathing prayer, breathing sky, and breathing wheel. Oh my goodness. This was the most violent poem I've ever seen in my life so far. I'm not even joking, guys. I'm so fucking serious right now. Ah, oh, 
it doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to take it out on your pen. Ah, that is... A, a pen fell off your backpack yesterday, so I took it home for a safekeeping and I, um, I just really like the way that it writes. So I wrote this poem with it and now you're touching it. Ah, I'm okay. What did I just... Can we pretend this conversation never happened? You can keep the poem though. <sighs> you have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Yes. I can't convince myself to go to therapy when I'm the happiest I've ever been. I'd rather keep this up until I blow my cover and someone takes me to the emergency emergency row. Okay, I can't read the remaining things. Okay, everyone, we're all done reading each other's poems, right? We have something we need to go over today. So if everyone could come sit at the front of the of the room, is that about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? Look, I know everyone's been a little more lively ever since Yorkfield joined and we started with some club activities. But this isn't the time for us to become complacent. We still only have four members, and the festival is our only real chance to find more, you know? What's so great about getting new members anyway? We already have enough to be considered an official club. More members would just mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. Natsuki, I don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to share your passion with as many people as you can? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? The Literature Club should be a place where people can express themselves like they can't do anywhere else. It should be a place so intimate that you never want to leave. I know you feel that way too. I know we all do. So that's why we should work hard and put something together for the festival, even if it's something small. Right, Yorkfield? Ah. Uh, oh, come on! You can't take advantage of Yorkfield to agree with you just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. Look, Monica, do you really think any of us joined the club with other people in mind? Judy never even talked until Yorkfield joined. As for me, I just like it better here than I do at home. And Yorkfield isn't even passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. Sorry, but you're really the one who's so interested in finding new members. The rest of us are fine like this. I know you're president and all, but you should really consider our opinions for once. Monica is clearly taken aback by Natsuki's words. That's not true at all. I'm sure Yuri and Yorkfield want to get more members too, right? I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I showed as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, then I would probably be lying. Still, if it's up to me to rescue the situation... Um, no. Natsuki's right, isn't she? This club... It's nothing more than a place for a few people to hang out. Why did I think that everyone here saw it the same way as I did? But that doesn't mean we're, that we're against getting new members or anything. Yorkfield, why did you even join this club? What were you hoping to get out of it? Well, that's not really something I can be honest about, isn't it? Is it? In fact, if I remember, you weren't even given a choice not to join. Monica sits down and stares at her desk. What's the point of all of this anyway? What if starting this club was a mistake? Now you've done it, Natsuki. What? Me? I just spoke my mind. Is it a crime to be honest? It's not about being honest. It's about word choice. Besides, you have no right to speak for everyone else in the club like that. <clears throat> you don't understand at all. I just... I just want a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. Is there a problem with the club being that for me? There aren't, there aren't many other places like that for me. And now Monica wants to take it away from me. She's not taking anything away. No, Yorkfield. It's not the same. It won't be the same with the direction she wants to take it. If I wanted that, then I could have joined any other stupid club. But this one, I mean... 
at least for a little bit of time. Things were nice. Natsuki starts packing up her things. I'm going home. I feel like I don't belong here right now. Natsuki! Natsuki ignores Yuri and walks right out of the classroom. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, do you have an opinion on the festival? I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. Who cares about that obnoxious brat? What the fuck? I mean, I like how nice and quiet this club is right now. And I'm just happy with you here. But still, I'm the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. <gasps> Nobody would cry if she killed herself? <gasps> Holy shit! You I! I should do my best to consider everyone's perspective and make the decision that's right for the club. But what about you, Yorkfeld? What do you want to get out of this club? Yuri repeats the same question as Monica. I decide giving an indirect answer is better than nothing. I think the most important thing is for everyone to get along and for the club to provide something that you can't get anywhere else. I don't think it's about how many members, but rather the quality of each member. That's what will end up making the rich club a special place. I see. I really agree with you. Each member contributes their own qualities in a special way. With each change of members, the identity of the club as a whole will change too. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Oh no, 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 no. Stop bleeding, okay? Don't bleed. Stepping out of your comfort zone once in a while. So if you would like to help Monica with the festival, then I'm on your side as well. All right. Well, maybe we can talk. I'll talk to Natsuki tomorrow. Yuri nods. Hey, Yuri. Huh? Um, I know things were a little awkward yesterday. But I feel like you deserve to know that I still think you're a wonderful vice president and also a wonderful friend. Monica! I want to do everything I can to make this the best club ever, okay? Me too. Yeah, let's go all, ho all go home for today. We'll talk about the festival tomorrow. Okay, I look forward to it. Shall we go, Yorkfield? Um, please don't take this the wrong way, but... I'm going to chat a little bit with Yorkfield before we leave, just to see what he thinks of his time here and all that. It's important to me as president. Yuri looks a little troubled, but she doesn't protest. Okay, I trust your judgment, Monica. In that case, I'll see the two of you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Monica waves at Yuri, exits the classroom. Phew, things have been a little hectic lately, haven't they? Yorkfield, I just wanted to make sure you're enjoying your time at this club. I would really hate to see you unhappy. I feel like I'm responsible for that as a president and the classroom has static and is getting darker. And I really do care about you, you know? I don't like seeing the other girls give you a hard time. But with how mean Natsuki is and everything, and Yudi being a little bit, you know, ah... Uh, Sometimes it feels like you and I are the only real people here. You know what I mean? But it's weird because in all the time you've been here, we've hardly gone to spend any time together. Ah, I mean, I guess it's technically only been a couple days. Sorry, I didn't mean to say anything weird. But there are just some things I've been hoping to talk about with you. Things I know only you could understand. So that's why... Wait, not yet. No! Thank you so much for watching this episode on Doki Doki Literature Club. We will be back in the next episode for more scary stuff probably and more sad stuff. Stay safe, take care, peace, bye!